to my name is Kate and this is my channel chapter Kate today I'm gonna to be doing a used book haul all these books are used my hands are not the first hands to have touched them yes so if you do not like YA you may not like this video because most of the used books in this haul are actually YA books because they had a sale and I'm all for a sale but not all of them. They're not all YA. Just most of them are YA. Here we go. All of the books in this book haul are either from Second and Charles, which is like a sister store to Books A Million, but it's like mostly secondhand books, and um, a local used bookstore called Mr. K's that I frequent. So, here we go. So I guess first I'll start with these little boogers because I don't have a clue what they are. They're, okay, so these are four westerns. Yeah, but they were, I didn't buy these. They were in the free bin outside of Second and Charles, and I was curious because I'd never really read a western. And they looked like they had all the cheesy goodness that you would expect from a western. But I think they're in a really big series, and this is number 12, 18, 13, and 19. I should probably rearrange those. One of them is called Spoon River Stud, but it's a series called Trailsman. The Trailsman, okay. I have no idea what to expect, but they all look very interesting. All of them have some sort of romantic scene on the front, like this little business right here. I don't know if that's gonna, that's probably not gonna autofocus there, but there we go. There we go, look at that. Think about that, this one's got like a tattoo tear so maybe she murdered someone and went to jail. Who knows? Prison tats and whatnot. Oh, this one's great. This one's got a dude falling off of a horse. And then, oh, I'm sure this is gonna demonize Native Americans. Um, looks like a Native American stabbing a woman. Um, oh, and these guys are, look like they're in that after you know what bliss, you know. So I have a feeling that these are not going to be good at all. I have a feeling they're going to be terrible. But I figured I would read them just to see. <laughs> and if they are terrible, I will probably just donate them to my work so they can have some more free books on the shelf for our patients. But they are all written by John Sharp. The next book is Freaks Alive on the Inside. It's about a little dude named Abel who is a member of a carnival circus sort of situation and this girl starts coming to him in his dreams and he's trying to find her and something like that I don't know his dad doesn't have any legs because his dad was a twin and his twin absorbed his legs so his dad's twin has four legs and apparently he might also have an extra something something but that doesn't all that also doesn't make any sense because his mom and dad produced him somehow so I, I don't I don't I don't know but okay so his dad has no legs his mom has no arms and then he's normal and he feels weird because he's normal and he likes to throw knives there were like four or five copies of this and usually if there's a lot of copies of something in a used bookstore there's a reason that nobody wanted to keep it but I'm gonna try it so far it's not terrible but we'll see my main issue with it currently is that the words are really close together and it hurts my eyes. Then I have How to Save the World do, 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 by Lexi Dunn. And this is the third in the Superheroes Anonymous series. And I read the first two Superheroes Anonymous and Supervillains Anonymous. And it follows a person named Gail Godwin who originally they called hostage girl because she kept getting like taken hostage by all these bad guys and that was like their trademark thing like they were gonna take this chick hostage and then she develops powers of her own in the first like the beginning of the first book so this follows her adventures I tried to get this at Barnes and Noble when I got the others and then I couldn't find it after I kept going back I couldn't find it so when I went to the used bookstore and I had it I was like snatching that one right on up because I've been looking for it but this is an adult trilogy I think it's just a trilogy. I don't think that there's a fourth, but I'm not really sure, so don't hold me to that. I actually originally discovered this at my Barnes & Noble that's closest to my home because they have like a wall. I don't know if all Barnes & Nobles have this, but probably, and it's like staff picks or staff recommendations, and it was on there, and I was like, 
yes please because I love superheroes and the sort of humor in this it goes between being kind of dark and serious to having like very campy kind of humor that you would expect out of like a comic book so I like it I can't wait to read this one because I read the first two and I'm excited Woo! then we have this brick of a book and this is the giver quartet by Lois Lowry and I've read the giver and I knew that there were other books too and I wanted to buy all those books and I haven't been able to find them all in a version that looks like mine so I'm really hoping to read the rest of this series um, because the first one was so good. If you don't know the concept of the story, it's kind of an advanced utopia, but it's really kind of dystopian. They kind of mellowed out any differences between people. Everything is sort of pre-planned. Emotions don't really play into things. Um, at least not many emotions. A lot of things are just very practical and different is kind of a problem. People don't see color anymore. All that kind of stuff um, in the first book. I don't know what happens in the rest of the books, so I'm hoping to get through that. And I thought it was really pretty because the pages are sprayed red, which is cool because um, the receiver, I think he's called in the first book, the first color he sees is red, I think. So that's kind of cool. That red is the... The next book I have is a, another edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Um, I always, if I find a pretty edition of this, I'm always going to grab it. I have so many copies of Alice in Wonderland, but... I just really, really love the art style of this one. I don't know if you can see. But the images are just so, so cute. Look at this adorable image. I just really, really like it. I just really, really like this art style. So I'm really excited to own this and just flip through it and look at all the pictures. I love it. I don't really buy Alice Wonderland for the story anymore because I know the story. I read the story. I just I love the different styles of art that kind of get associated with it. The next two books are ones that I've owned before and I cannot find and those are two books of the Twilight series. I don't feel ashamed for liking the series. I enjoyed it. It was addictive at one point in my life. I liked all of them except for the second one which is New Moon. Um, it, but when I went to find my copies, I could only find New Moon, which is just, of course, of course that's all I could find. So I found Eclipse and Breaking Dawn, and they were cheap used copies, and I was just excited to have another copy on my shelf because I can't find my copies. But I've already bought them once, so here they are, woo! And then the next is Maximum Ride, The Angel Experiment by James Patterson. Someone that I was really close to in school um, wanted me to read the series and I never did. So I decided to pick it up just to try out the first one. And if I don't like it, I'm going to donate it to the library at work. Because they have the second one but not the first one. But I figured it would be a safe thing to try out. So Then we have this series and it is the Factotum. Wait, what is it called? So these are the Foundlings Tale, I guess, trilogy? I guess it's a trilogy or a, just a series. I don't know. Um, I'm not really sure if it's a series or a trilogy. But it's a, I got three books of this series, and it's The Foundling's Tale. Um, they're Foundling, Lamplighter, and Factotum, or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce them. But the author's name is D.M. Cornish. It's about some kind of guy who's a lamplighter, but I don't know what that means. I've kind of gotten, like, the general, like, aesthetic of the series. It's very kind of, like, dark. Um, I'm not really, I don't really know much about the actual plot line because I like to go into some things kind of blind since a lot of secrets and surprises are ruined on a lot of popular books. I don't know anything about the series so I kind of like the surprise of kind of finding out about it. But from what I've kind of skimmed on stuff about it, there's like um, a foundling house for boys and girls and I don't know if foundlings are like orphans or, or what. But um... It seems like a kind of a fantasy world, and I hear the world build, building's kind of good. So, we'll see. I'll talk more about it once I have a better idea. Then I have a popular book, and that is The Book Thief. Um, I figured I should read it because everybody says it's life-changing. I didn't expect it to be as thick as it is. I know it's not, like, huge, but I didn't expect it to be this thick. I thought it was smaller. Um, but it's a historical fiction, and I used to love historical fiction when I was younger, and then I just kind of stopped reading historical fiction so I'm trying to get back into it. I bought like a couple of really good historical fiction um, novels recently so I'm going to try and get into them. Another one of those books is And I Darken by Kirsten White and I hear this is a historical fiction and it's got kind of a woman power vibe about it but I honestly have nothing else to say. I don't know anything else about it. This is another one that I've kind of heard a lot about on booktube but I haven't heard a lot about the plot. So, I'm kind of looking forward to being surprised by the plot and surprised by, like, what's going on there. But it seems to have kind of a, an assassin-y vibe to it. 
And there seems to be a lot of political intrigue. She's trying to fight against an empire. Um, she, it seems very woman power. I don't. I can't really give you like a real vibe about it because I literally just look at the aesthetic of a book and I'm like, ooh, this seems dark. This seems very otherworldly. This seems very quirky. I just kind of absorb the general vibe from like the summaries and things that I hear about it. And I kind of just go with that and if I decide if I like it from that, so. The next is The Immortalist, which has got a really pretty cover that I didn't notice was reflecty until just now, so that's pretty, by Chloe Benjamin. Generally, I know that there's like some woman who can kind of, uh, I guess she's like a fortune teller and she can predict people's death and it's kind of like what do people do with that information? Do they live life to the fullest? Do they avoid that knowledge? What do they do? So that, that I don't know. So I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Then we have Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. It's a retelling of the story of Abraham Lincoln, who is a very real human, and but it, it, it's like the secret story of Abraham Lincoln. He actually hunted vampires, and I don't know, man. I think it's by the same author that wrote. Yes, it is. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. So I'm gonna enjoy this because this is like historical fiction, but like twisted. Next we have. Nancy Farmer's The Sea Tro Nancy Farmer's The Sea of Trolls. I read a book by Nancy Farmer called like House of Scorpion or something when I was younger and really liked it. And I was actually looking for that book and I came across this book and it had a very Nordic vibe and I enjoy Nordic vibes, so I was like, give me that. But when I read the back of this, I saw the words dragon, giant spider, fog lots of mysterious things i don't know so we'll see if you know anything about any of these books i would love to hear like if you've had experiences with them because this is a used bookstore not all of them are current some of them are older some of them are newer i kind of grab based on just a little blurb that i see on the back but i also don't like to just read a blurb to you so i love used bookstores to be honest i love them it's like giving books a new life that may have ended up somewhere and someone who's didn't really want them's hands not words. I love used bookstores because then books get kind of a second life. Books that may have ended up, you know, in the trash or in someone's hands that didn't actually want the book or abandoned somewhere in a box. I love used bookstores. I love them so much. Um, and it kind of provides me with the opportunity to find books that I may not have found or books like in the Twilight instant books that I've already owned but I can't find. But I just love used bookstores. They're great. Yeah, but that's all I have to say today. If you like this video, click the little thumbs up. And if you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye. Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night. I feel the soldiers coming under, pulling up a fight. I feel my eyelids closing under the wind.